Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. This episode, I'm gonna talk about what to do with uh, your project if you've got parts or bolts or pieces that you don't wanna leave in bare metal and you really don't wanna paint. What else can you possibly do with them? Well, one thing is you can nickel plate them. And that's what we're gonna dive into on this episode right here is how to nickel plate parts at home for a pretty inexpensive price. So. If you guys feel like you want to be a mad scientist for a day, stay tuned and I'll show you guys how to do it. One thing I got to say as a disclaimer before I get in this video is I am new to this nickel plating process and so I'm just going to show you what I've learned and kind of show you the basics of how to get into it. But please do not take my video as an exact how-to video. Uh, I'm still learning to do this and this is just kind of going to show you guys the basic steps in the process and uh, so please guys don't destroy me in the comments if you want to help me and show me uh, better ways to do it or give me some pointers by all means but uh, this is not really an exact how to it's just more how you can do something at home so so here we go um, as long as you have like a sandblaster or a way to get your metal clean at home um, pretty much everything that I got to do this is under 100 bucks, so it's pretty inexpensive to do. So let's get into it. Okay, so I'm going to start plating process by prepping these door latch strikers. And first of all, I'm going to get the rust off and then I'll sandblast the paint off. And then clean them up and prepare them for plating. I like to use evapor rust. Uh, this stuff actually works out really good. Use it in the past to get a lot of rust off stuff. And yes, you can sandblast it, but unless you have a really good cabinet, it takes way too long. So I just do it this way. Get most of the crap off and anything left over, then I'll sandblast off. We'll leave that for 12 to 24 hours. See what happens. Okay, everyone, I'm gonna show you guys how to get this from this and this has been soaking in evapor rust for a couple days removed everything as far as corrosion and also removes the paint which is nice I'm gonna go ahead and sandblast these while I am preparing a solution to do the plating but uh, the results are pretty decent doing this at home obviously I went ahead and did some testing and got this done and now I'm gonna show you guys the process Okay, so everything to do this, I purchased for under $100. And you can do this without one of these, but I highly recommend it. You can just do it with um, an old charger, a couple of batteries. This makes it a lot easier. Uh, this rectifier can be bought online for like $50, $60, so it's not that big of a purchase. You'll need some sort of a container. I prefer glass, uh, this one's Pyrex, just so it'll handle the heat. When you're plating, depending on what your voltages are, it can create a decent amount of heat, so prefer to have this over plastic. And you'll need some vinegar, pure white distilled vinegar. 10% uh, is preferable, I believe. I could only find 5%, it does work. A little bit more uh, acid content would be better, but. And then you need something to promote uh, electrical current. And for that, we use some salt. Depending on how much solution you make will determine how much salt you need for this amount. Mm, a little less than a teaspoon is plenty. Obviously you wanna stir this up, get the salt dissolved inside there. Now to make a plating solution, you're gonna want an anode and a cathode and for this purpose it doesn't really matter which side you put it on both sides need to be pure nickel but when you're plating your plating part needs to be on the negative side always otherwise you'll have a mess now when I'm creating a solution I turn the voltage up pretty high and amperage somewhere around four four to five amps i'm still kind of learning this process so you'll forgive me i'm sure there's a lot better voltages to set these at plus 
I haven't actually tested this rectifier and even seen if it's putting out the voltages and amperage that it says it is. So I'm just going by what the display says. And here you'll see the reaction taking place. The bubbles is hydrogen forming and Essentially, this is going to dissolve and it's going to attach some particles to your negative side while creating a nice green solution. The darker green, the better. Tip, don't let your alligator clips go into the solution. That also makes a mess as well. And as you can see, I can see it, but not really on camera. It's already starting to slightly get a tinge of green. But I will let this go on for about an hour or so, and this will be a nice animal green when I'm done. In the meantime, I'm going to get these in the sandblaster and get those sandblasted down. As you can see, a green tint is definitely starting to show now. This has been going about 15 minutes. However, I've had the advantage of doing this a few times, so I've already got about a gallon made up right there. I'm just going to switch it out and uh, fill this up and get plating. Okay, one thing I will say is with voltage and amperage, a lot of these settings are going to be determined by how big a part you're going to be plating. The bigger the part, the more the amperage, the smaller the part, the lower the amperage. I still keep the voltage somewhere around 3 to 5 volts. Um, for the smaller parts I'm going to be plating, I'm going to run about 3 amps or so uh, with this big piece. The other one I ran about 5 amps and it turned out pretty good. I'm going to go about 3.5 show you guys. So for these smaller parts, I attach a copper wire to my lead. Do it this way. Got to say too, these parts need to be perfectly clean, uh, degreased, even out of the sandblaster. Whether you use a lacquer thinner, acetone, make sure they're clean. And the warmer the solution, the better. When this solution is at room temperature, it doesn't work that uh, good. But when it's, uh, say, 120 degrees or so, it, uh, it reacts a lot faster. And you want to move the part around. Don't want to keep it in one spot. Um, when it's a, a larger part, especially if it's facing the positive side, that side will get a larger amount of nickel plated to it. So you want to keep rotating it, moving it around. And I got to put a disclaimer out there. I have only been doing this about a day or two, still learning the process. So do not take what I say as gospel. I'm just kind of showing you the basics. And normally this plating usually happens a lot faster with some of the other guys I've seen do this. I don't know if my solution is not strong enough yet or my little machine here uh, isn't a very good one, but it takes a lot longer to plate these parts than what I've seen online. Or maybe I'm just demanding a lot thicker coating. Oh, and lastly, a big one too, is whatever surface finish the part is, that's what your nickel is going to look like. So if you polish the part to a high shine in bare metal, you're going to have a pretty shiny nickel part. If you've just sandblasted like this, it's going to be a nice satin finish when you're done. Now I'm cheating a little bit here. I have uh, actually turned my voltage up to about 10. With my setup, I've actually found that uh, that voltage works a lot better and faster for me your results will probably vary a lot. There you go. One nickel plated part. And there's kind of a color difference between bare steel and the nickel. Okay guys, here's both sets after they've both been plated with all the hardware. One thing you will notice is this looks a little bit shinier. This looks a little duller. This set, I actually fully sandblasted. This set came right out of the evapo rust and went into the nickel solution. So that right there shows you the difference in 
what kind of uh, finish you'll get just by the texture of the metal. But I mean, overall, for the first time, trying it out, I'd say it's acceptable. Not professional by any means, but better than bare metal. Well, there you have it. There's how you can nickel plate at home and uh, make your parts look new again for pretty inexpensive uh, amount of money. So if you uh, got some stuff to do, by all means, I suggest you try it. Um, one thing I will say is complex parts such as stuff like the door latches for the C10, for example, um, probably aren't gonna do too well nickel plating at home. Too many complex uh, shapes and lots of crevices to get in and out of. I haven't tried it yet, but it uh, probably isn't gonna do so well. Best thing is like the, the rods and stuff, um, plates, obviously bolts, nuts, screws, all that stuff turns out pretty good. And it's been four or five videos since I've asked, so uh, I'm gonna say it on this video. If you guys have learned something or you enjoy the videos, or if you want to ever see if I get this truck behind me finished, <laughs> please subscribe, like, share, whatever, you know. Always helps the channel, so I would really appreciate it. And in the next video coming up, I'm going to uh, show you guys how the aftermarket door for the C10 turned out. Not going to spoil it, so if you want to see uh, if all the work was worth it, stay tuned for the next one. Until then, we'll see you guys later. Goodbye.